Well, good evening, everybody. Um, this is the Scarborough Town Council, Wednesday, March 6th. Our regular meeting starting at 6th. So this is called to order. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I just added three minutes. <laughs> All right, I call us back to order. We just are returning from executive session, so thank you for your patience. We're a little bit over time, but thank you for your patience. And we'll return to the agenda. We are on item four, which is general public comments. Anybody that has general comments that does not pertain to one of the agenda items is welcome to come to the podium at this time. Don't start the clock yet. <laughs> My name is Mike Doyle. I live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and I write for my website, falmatoday.me. Uh, I've got the final report, part three, on the CUSAC case. This was a case that was involving a uh, home invasion attack on Andrew CUSAC. The person involved was facing uh, approximately 50 years if he'd been convicted of all the charges. It was reduced down to eight months, <coughs> sentence, me, eight year sentence with all but nine months suspended and he's serving the nine months at the uh, county uh, jail, so he'll be out in probably four and a half months. This is the testimony from three police officers in the Scarborough Department that had between 20 and 30 years of service. Scott Vaughn testimony, Assistant D District Attorney Diaz asked, do any SPD members have any relationship with Beach Ridge or Cusack? Vaughn answered no. Diaz, are you paid beyond the time and a half from the town for working at a race? Vaughn answered, no money received directly. Chief Mullen has a relationship with CUSAC that goes back years. He's on CUSAC's, uh, excuse me, he's on Mullen's uh, distribution list on the 13th line on the right-hand side of a large group of email addresses. <clears throat> what happened was, for years, cops could bring their families and get free tickets, free food, and free drink, drinks. Uh, at the races if they weren't on duty. And this got abused to the point where cops were bringing friends, families with them, and to the point where Cusack just said, that's it, we're not gonna let anyone bring any more people for free food, free drinks, free tickets. Cusack, from another source, uh, sends out free season tickets to the races to every cop in Southern Maine. What's the chance of Cusack getting a speeding ticket if he's already paid the bribe in advance with a free season ticket? Sergeant Pearson was asked by Assistant District Attorney Diaz, does CUSAC pay anything to the police? Pearson, none I know of. Diaz, any fringe benefits? No. I don't know how you folks measure it, but if you're getting free tickets, free food, and free drink when you're not on duty with you and your family, that would seem to be a fringe benefit. Defense lawyer, overtime, question mark, one and a half times overtime pay, question mark, worked every year there. This is all to Sergeant Pearson, question mark. What about pay directly from Beach Ridge? Pearson's answer, and this is on the recording that I listened to from the uh, state court system. Highly improper directly from Beach Ridge. All the answers that these police officers gave regarding fringe benefits and compensation outside of the one and a half times paid by the town constitute direct perjury, either directly or by omission. And on top of that, cops were getting complaints all the time that Moulton was walking around the race area with a cup full of beer, and people ask if he can walk around with beer and drink beer at the race, why can't we? This is what's going on in this town that you may or may not know about, but this is the, the final chapter of the CUSAC case. And this guy's gonna spend four and a half months in jail for doing what he did to Mr. CUSAC. Thank you. completely different notes. <laughs> I'm Becky Delaware. I'm vice president of the Scarborough Historical Society, and I'm here to update you about our project with the Beach Ridge um, Schoolhouse, which we now believe was built prior to 1853. Hmm. You may have seen the recent articles in the Leader or the Forecaster, and there's another one from the Portland Press Herald that's due out in the near future. The Beechridge Schoolhouse is the only district or one-room school um, building that has not been repurposed in Scarborough. The Scarborough Historical Society is ready to start the process of restoration so that Scarborough students can explore what education was like in the early 1900s. 
first and foremost is to get a good foundation underneath it and a tight roof over it. Right now, the brick foundation is pushing out from underneath the building so that in places, nothing is supporting the building. We have an estimate from Mary Movers, who helped move the Danish Village Arch and our local business in town, and we are told the only business left moving buildings in the state of Maine. To jack up the building, support the floor, and put a full foundation under it is estimated to be just under $50,000. And is, that is where they are supplying some of the materials at cost to us. We want a full foundation so that we can hide the modern necessities, the electricity, the water, the things that wouldn't have been original to the building. We would like to get the foundation done this year, but we know Mary is booked six months in advance, so if we got the money today, we still would have to wait till September before they could start the work. Right now, the damage to the building is minimal, as the foundation is. But the time is, time is of the essence for us um, if we're going to get it done this year. The situation is only going to get worse if it sits for another year. The roof is worn but not leaking yet. The es estimate for that is just under $10,000. For the two project, we need $60,000. We will be applying for grants and organizing a campaign to help with the rest of the restoration, but we need help now. As you know, the Scarborough Historical Society is nonprofit and volunteer, and we don't normally come to the town to ask for financial help, but now may be the time that we're coming. For other donations, we have a GoFundMe page as well as our mailing address at P.O. Box 156 in Scarborough. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment this evening? Hearing none, I close public comment. Mr. Chair, <coughs> yes. uh, just as the sitting council person on the uh, historic preservation, I know they've been looking at this issue for a long time and I just want to put my plug in and anything that we could do to help with, with this situation would be greatly appreciated. So just put that out there. Or anybody out there. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I would support that. Anybody else? Any thoughts? Okay. Thank you. Um, Next item on the agenda is adjustments to agenda. We don't, oh, minutes, I'm sorry. Um, the minutes for February 20th. Is there a, any a motion to approve? So moved. Any comments or changes or edits? Second. Second. Oh, second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> any comments or edits, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes? Unanimous? Um, but I was absent. Done. Oh, absent. Okay. thank you. Um, adjustments to agenda, there are none. Items to be signed, they're in front of me, and I will sign them this evening. Um, the next order is order, next item on the agenda is order number 18018, 7 p.m. public hearing and schedule the second reading on the proposed contract zone request from the Patriot Accurate Dealership located on the corner of Payro in, I think it's Barclay. Um, with that time, I don't know if you have any comments or we had this conversation the other night. Yeah, you uh, you had it back before you uh, <coughs> following their um, preliminary site plan approval at the planning board, and so the process requires a public hearing and then ultimately second reading, uh, which uh, would be scheduled for uh, the twentieth through the next meeting. So tonight is just to hold a public hearing only. And does anybody have any comments they'd like to share? Seeing none, um, I'll close that item. Next item is order number 19013, 7 p.m. public hearing. Yes. If I could, the second reading on that item would be March 20th. So the, so the second reading will be March 20th. Order number 19013, 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the following new request for a combined massage establishment and massage therapist license for Marie Ann Dittmer at DBA Focal Point Manual Therapies, located at 25 Placid Drive, number six. Um, 
Is there a is there a motion to approve? Usually, Tony, do you give? Is there any? Is there this any is just a generic no? application that comes before the council thereafter. After this one, the renewals will not be presented. Be in front of it. And everything's in order. Motion to approve. So moved. Uh, yes. They need to open the public hearing. Thank you. Any comments? Public hearing. Seeing none. Motion to approve. So moved. <laughs> Second. Any discussion, comments? All those in favor? Thank you. Um, old business order number 19003, second reading on the proposed changes to chapter 405, the zoning ordinance of the town of Scarborough, Haggis Parkway District. Um, with that motion, is, are there any public comments? Tom, is there any introduction for this? I, Jay Chase has uh, appeared before you as is uh, Karen Martin. I think <coughs> the matter has been properly introduced to council. I'm pleased to give an overview if you like, but uh, this matter uh, started at Long Ridge Planning Committee, mm -hmm. uh, has been to Planning Board. Uh, their input, uh, they're essentially recommending approval of this. It's really intended to clarify what's been a somewhat of a longstanding point of confusion to staff and applicants and the like. Uh, regarding the mix between residential and uh, commercial type development uh, along in the Huggs Parkway district. So this will go a long way to clarify that, that point. Thank you. Any public comment on that issue? <coughs> Seeing none, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Order number 19006, second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 901, the Town of Scarborough Garbage and Recycling Collection and Disposal Ordinance. I know we have talked about this before. Tom, is Yes, uh, this, uh, this came from staff. Mike Shaw at Public Works uh, brought this mm. forward. I believe it did touch base uh, at ordinance and uh, finds itself before you. Mm. This is intended to do a couple of fairly simple things, but I think important for uh, Public Works. Uh, it provides a further clarification on the definition of yard waste and more importantly um, makes certain that this waste should not be placed on the paved street which is often a, a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing it does is uh, make clear that the recycling and, and uh, solid waste containers that we all have at the curbside must be uh, removed from the street within 24 hours of collection. Uh, apparently and maybe many of you traverse the town some folks choose to leave those barrels at the curbside uh, all the time, Correct. and that can be problematic mm -hmm. for plowing and all sorts of other purposes. So this just really adds clarity. Um, the former language was um, not quite sufficient, I guess, in our view. So this makes it clear that within 24 hours of your day of collection, bring your barrels back to your house. Any, anyone wish to comment on this? <coughs> Seeing none, um, a motion to approve. So moved. Second. That's true. Any discussion, comments from anybody? All those in favor? Unanimous. I should have had a budget on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> We're in a roll. Um, order number 19014, new business. Um, first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 304, Town of Scarborough Purchasing Policy, which came from the Ordinance Committee. And I don't know if that's a Yeah, I can, I can speak like to that. that. Thank you. Yeah, this was um, uh, Larissa Crockett, who is technically the uh, purchasing person, however. Um, in reviewing over time, uh, did a review of all the policies, talked to various uh, town departments and whatever, and has recommended uh, the changes that you can see uh, here um, as marked up in red. Uh, it did come out of ordinance with a, a unanimous vote, so uh, we would like to see this move forward. I'll also note that our uh, town auditors recommended updates to a number of policies, including this one specifically. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, in part why we looked at it, but it was it was it was time for us to kind of update it and modernize it at the same time. Is there any public comment on this this evening? Seeing none, motion motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Questions? 
Somebody has to say something. At some point. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not on the ordinance committee, but I did witness uh, Larissa making a presentation, and I can say personally all these changes make perfect sense. It is really about uh, the language had no reference to the Internet or anything like that, so it, it's really removed some barriers for purchasing that, that really didn't need to be there. So That's all. <laughs> thank you for your support. Hey, yes, no thank you. <laughs> Anyone else would like to comment? Motion. Uh, all those in favor? Unanimous. And, and item number nineteen zero one five is after on the request from the council chair to adopt the two thousand nineteen goals and norms. We did have a working session in this past week um, where we did discuss these. They are in front of you. Um, so with that, um, you have the documents in front of you. I don't know if anybody has time. If you well, does it make sense stuff. just to read through them? Please yeah, do sure. if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. So the norms we adopted is acknowledge one another's thoughts and positions and be curious about them, seek to understand, be civil and respectful during dialogues, begin and end with what's best for the community in mind, listening and acknowledging community input and considerations during the process, improve internal council communications, and actively practice humility in sort of all our interactions. The goals were, there are really only two goals this year. In prior years, we've had multiple goals. This year is really two major sort of themes. One is around community relations. Um, and sort of the, the, the bullets underneath that were work to understand different views. Um, work on, or the, the, the language is continue to build trust with our community and the stakeholders. Determine the most effective methods for engaging our community. So those were sort of under community relations. Under budget, we had tax increase not to exceed 3%. The tax <coughs> rate projection will adhere to policy regarding valuation increases and the impact of the residential revaluation shall not be considered in these projections. So it's sort of the methodology we've used in the past. Clear and consistent messaging regarding the factors to be considered in the project in, in the projection of the estimated tax rate. So those are the issues we discussed. Um, Anybody, any public comment on that? If not, with a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion, comments from those that participate? Council Hamm, yeah? Uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, thank the chairman and also facilitator Carol Martin. Uh, you know, it's hard to uh, find time to do things like this, so I appreciate um, uh, Peter and the council making it a priority and devoting the time. Uh, it was a good discussion, uh, and I think that uh, you know it's a simple list that uh, I think we're committed to hold one another accountable, and we appeal to the public to help us as well, uh, giving us feedback on how we're doing or not. So, look Thank forward you. to that. Councilor Foley. Um, yeah, I would echo what Councilor Hamill. Um, just said as, as well, I think one of the places where I see uh, groups of leaders fall down is they, they can't overcomplicate it. And I like the fact that we, we had some robust discussion that night, um, and, uh, but, but boiled it down to make it a little bit simple. Um, because I do think sometimes it gets, you know, the, the goal gets outweighed by the process. And so by simplifying things and, and always keeping the community at the forefront of those decisions, we're going to always do the right thing. So I um, wanted to thank all my fellow counselors who could be there that evening uh, for the conversation. I thought it was well done. Thank you. Councilor Bailey. Uh, thank you. Um, so first, I, I think it's um, telling that uh, we bring this up tonight. We have a special guest in the audience, and that's former Council Chairman uh, Jessica Holbrook, because when I came on the uh, when I came back on the Town Council in 2014, I think it was the first year in which I saw a true exercise around setting Council goals. So the fact that we're continuing it five years later, I think, is a testament to all the leaders that have come in between her stint as our chairperson and then Peter's stint. So really appreciate the work. Um, and, and I got to I got to mention that. Um, it's always been a laundry list of like all these things that we've always wanted to do that are very concrete. And so in the essence of board governance, which is kind of the foray that I kind of was brought up in, these goals more align with what a true board should have. And those are rather broad general <coughs> understandings of where we want to drive this community or where we want to take the community without having um, 
overly intrusive kind of measurements because um, we can be truly um, optimistic about those. Understanding that the tax rates piece is obvious that that's a focus of a community um, in many aspects, so I can see why that, that is added. Um, I do want to clarify one part of this, and that is that regarding the last, I'm sorry, the second part of this regarding the re residential revaluation, because I've gotten a lot of questions from citizens asking, does that mean that when they come to us talking about their concerns or their wants and their needs for the community, <coughs> are we going to restrict their free speech to be able to include that? And I hope that people understand that, that these are the norms and the kind of the way that we have agreed from a consensus basis to operate and to have a conversation. In no way does that necessarily mean that they can't use those evaluative tools, whether it's that particular one or whether it's other pieces, you know, the measurements that go around it. So I hope they understand is that these are kind of the things that we're agreeing to act upon and not restrict them. But thank you for the work that was done. Anybody else? Any other comments? Um, <clears throat> so with that, all those in favor of adopting? Yes, thank you. Um, item number eight was non-action items. There are none this evening. Item number nine are the standing, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. And I'll start at that end of the table tonight. Council I don't know if you'd like to. So uh, we had an uh, appointments and negotiations uh, committee meeting on Monday. It was a light agenda, but we're committing to trying to hold a monthly meeting just to you know keep the cadence and rhythm going. Uh, you know, the, the busiest season for appointments is right at the beginning of the year, so we are pretty happy with how we move through that. We are going to spend a little more time focusing on the negotiations aspect of the committee and look forward to getting uh, Liam Gallagher to help us with that and some other matters, uh, you know, in the April meeting. Dawn, can you? I'm sorry. Because yeah. I wasn't able to go to long range planning. Can yeah. I report on that? Uh, and we, uh, I stood in for, uh, for Jean Marie on a Friday long range planning committee meeting uh, with Jay Chase and the team. Uh, and we, uh, uh, this, t this goes off into a little bit of an ordinance committee, but we had a couple of things that we wanted to get input on. Um, one was uh, site notification, and the other one was uh, simplification and streamlining of the contract zone process. I'm very pleased to say that we had uh, members of the planning board who attended the Long Range Planning Committee as well, and outstanding work, really simply outstanding work by Jay Chase, assisted by Larissa Crockett in that effort. So, you know, we're really you know, when I first went through this and I was explained to me what I had to do in terms of get something through, I thought, well, this is how things die. We go to committee and then I'll never see it again. And that's not it at all. It actually <laughs> is a process of building support and getting people on board and the momentum is moving nicely. So we're looking ahead to, uh, you know, coming back to the ordinance committee on the, uh, I think it's the 21st uh, and then uh, early April uh, in front of the council uh, for those things combined. And we look forward very much to some um, feedback and input from the public and we actually these originated through discussions from a couple of fairly um, meaty topics that touched on contract zones and, and site notification so so we're very happy with that. I want to thank everybody for the great teamwork on that and also you know uh, the helpful reminders from Tom and his staff on the process to be followed. <laughs> I just wanted to use the opportunity to amplify a point that Councilor Hamill has made uh, you should really feel proud and, and comfortable with the substance and the, and the, and the, the committee work that you, you have going on. Uh, I think all of our goals is to have uh, the hard work being done at that level so when things materialize in front of you, uh, mm -hmm. they're fairly well, very well worked through. And ideally they are without question or controversy. Uh, I think you'll find as matters are introduced, they only come out improved. Uh, they don't go to purgatory and never come back. So um, I'm really pleased with it. It's, this has been a multi-year effort to really make sure that we are staffing properly, that we're supporting our committees, and that we're able to do the good work, which uh, I think is evidence when it comes uh, forward to you. So forgive me for <laughs> Council Donovan? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll uh, <clears throat> pick up on the... Uh, uh, Tom Andrews' comments because the Energy Committee met. <clears throat> we have a new sustainability coordinator. <clears throat> she is very organized. Uh, the meetings are productive. Uh, the action items are very clear. Uh, 
We are working on the uh, energy section of the comprehensive plan. Uh, the committee also expressed uh, a favorable outlook towards the Conservation Committee's consideration of a ban on plastic bags, mm -hmm. controversial issue, and I was hoping that Councillor Baybine maybe would have a little bit of insight because that has been in the news at the state level, uh, and so uh, we'd all be interested in that. <clears throat> uh, Housing Alliance uh, uh, is working on the RFP process. Uh, and they are nearly done. This doesn't come back to us, but uh, but I'll try and report on uh, exactly what what it results in. This is going to be an open application process, uh, and the RFP simply makes clear what's needed uh, for each applicant to be able to get a completed application before uh, the committee. The committee then does an analysis of it uh, and then makes a recommendation to the town council uh, because this is usually in the nature of support, as we have provided support for Southgate, uh, uh, Vesta, uh, various uh, uh, affordable housing entities. Uh, the last one was pest management. And again, uh, uh, I am so impressed with Todd Souza's organizational skills. The meetings are, are very, very active, very focused. Uh, they're working on a report to the town council, uh, a complete update uh, for the last six, seven years of their existence. I can't quite remember when they started, but uh, they uh, hope to present uh, their report perhaps as, uh, in the way of a workshop this year so that uh, they really have uh, operated in obscurity. And I think that uh, it would benefit the town council to hear uh, hear what they've been doing. Thank you. Councilor, just a quick question. I know in the past I've kind of talked about it. Will that report have some of the, you know, sort of invest, return on investment kind of comparisons mm -hmm. between the different methodologies of yeah, looking at conventional versus The, the report versus. digs deep. Good. Uh, yes. Yeah, because I know it's been sort of a, something we've asked about for a couple of years, so that's great. Thank Absolutely. You. Yeah, um, ordinance, you've heard <coughs> some uh, things that have come out of it. Uh, we did have a really good meeting, and as Councillor Hamill talked about, we talked about site plan approval and contract zone changes that have gone on to the Long Range Planning Committee and will be coming uh, to the town council for some changes. The big thing is marijuana, <laughs> and what are we going to do in this town regarding marijuana since it's been so-called legalized in, in the state? Um, for people at home who don't know, you have to opt in now under state rules for, for adult use. Um, so we had, had two public, I don't know if you want, they're not hearings, they're more like discussions. And uh, Phil Sauce here, who's our town attorney, is considered the state uh, guru <laughs> on the law around marijuana right now. And he came and he did a really good presentation Larissa Crockett has done, had some training in this. She's gone to some of the main municipal um, um, workshops on it. Uh, the first, uh, well, the evening one that we had, I had Eric Gunderson, who's now the new director of, I don't know what they call it, but marijuana for the state. Um, he, he happened to come and listen to some of the feedback from, uh, we had some growers here and and some people from the public. The turnout wasn't, I was hoping the turnout would be better, but it is what it is. Uh, the big thing is we are meeting March 21st is our next meeting at 4.30, not at 4, because we can't get into this room until 4.30. Um, but we are, we have a pretty intensive effort to try to get something out to the town council by May, June, maybe, on our recommendations for where we think the town should go. And I certainly invite any of the you, members of the public, obviously, but counselors also, to come and let us know your thoughts on what we should do, particularly around the retail and mm -hmm. adult use. That's the big, I think, uh, sticking point, if you want to put it that way, on that. <clears throat> also, I'm on the uh, main Municipal Legislative Policy Committee. As you can imagine, we are swamped. So I sort of know how Sean feels to some degree. Um, 
But we review, uh, we break up into uh, subcommittees. I happen to be on a tax, education, and appropriations subcommittee where we review for a whole morning <coughs> bills and whatnot. Um, and I will talk in my counselor comments about an opportunity that I've been, I've been requested to uh, do some testimony regarding municipal revenue sharing, but I'll talk about that in counselor comments. Um, and then historic preservation. You heard from our, our friends at the Historic Society. The, I mean, this schoolhouse, you have to understand that there aren't many of these around anywhere um, that can be preserved the, the way this one can. And I see it as a way not only to educate people about how education used to be, um, but it will also be a great opportunity. Um, it's my understanding, and you can correct me, Becky, if I'm wrong, but there'll be some opportunity for the public perhaps to use the building also, you know, as time goes by. Um, and I would hate to see this, this building disappear because once buildings are gone, that's it, they're gone. So um, I hope that the council will really take into consideration <coughs> helping out in some way with that. Uh, and with that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Councilor Paul. Uh, yeah, a lot of meetings, um, but I'm not the chair of those committees, so I'll let the chairs respectfully uh, give their updates. Um, you heard about ordinance, rules and policy got postponed. Uh, we had a joint communications committee meeting today with the communications committee from the school board, and um, Councillor Johnson will uh, update everybody on that. But I, I think what I want to say about it is just how much I've enjoyed um, the conversation. It feels very different mm -hmm. from years past for me, um, where we're really truly trying to take what was a great concept and put it into practice. Um, and that from a, a how we communicate, how we talk about the budget, how we talk to each other, how we work together. And uh, and that feels great. Um, you're going to talk about the Eastern Trail Alliance, no, too, you, aren't no, you? No, take the Eastern Trail. <laughs> take it. So I'm on the committee uh, for the Eastern Trail Alliance, and we do have our second uh, annual gala, Taste of the Town, coming up at Camp Ketcha. At 6th? <coughs> See, I'm looking at you. Yeah, April 6th. Yes, yep. April 6th. Uh, tickets are on sale. You can visit the Facebook page. Um, and Time Pilots are playing again, and there's going to be some great auction items. So fun night out and supporting a great cause. That's it for me. Thank you. Also, Johnson? So the Communication Committee met on Monday. Um, some exciting things. The, the One of the biggest things coming out is the budget book will now be available in PDF format at Staples. Uh, so if you give Staples 24 hours or to 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours notice, they will have a black and white copy of the budget book available for you, and that's for just under $36. Uh, so if you've gone to the town town hall before and tried to get a budget book for yourself, it runs like 180 Six, bucks, I think. Wow. Yeah. So uh, one of the focuses we were we worked on the last couple of weeks is how do we make the budget book more accessible mm -hmm. and more cost effective uh, for the residents. Uh, in addition, you can still get the color done through Staples, and that's only 168 dollars, <laughs> and uh, only. But we would ask that that perhaps instead of venturing to town hall, you go to Staples, and it, it's a lot, a lot less work for staff to put together all those budget books. Um, so again, budget books are now available black and white, 24 to 48 hours notice. You can pick them up right at Staples. You don't have to deal with the town for about 36 bucks. Uh, the March 26th, and that was just moved to 6.30 in here in Chambers, we're going to have our first quarterly roundtable uh, discussions. That will be two town uh, excuse me three town councilors and three board of education members. There'll be six of us here. Uh, we're going to swing open the doors for an hour and a half to two hours, and welcome anybody that wants to to come up and to talk about anything that is on their mind. And we'll have snacks. And we'll have snacks. Uh, we have a budget for snacks. It's a very small budget, um, but that's March 26 at 6:30, and that will be every quarter. So we'll be holding those on a consistent basis moving forward. Uh, lastly, we adopted uh, the council. Uh, excuse me, the committee voted to adopt some shared expectations between the town council and the public, which I believe will be coming up for the next meeting. It'll be on the agenda for the entire town council. Uh, it's a really, it's a shout out to Larissa Crockett. She, I think everybody here has, shout, has given Larissa mm -hmm. Crockett props tonight. So she's everywhere. Uh, yeah. But we have a nice visual that, that lays out pretty clearly what the expected communication level is. 
depending on what actions we're taking. So what is the expectation? What is the expectation if we're passing an ordinance, or if it's something simpler, or if it's something more involved, and when are public hearings necessary? So it's just a nice graphic, and it's easy for the public to digest. It's easy for me to digest, so mm -hmm. it's got to be easy for the public. <laughs> um, lastly, as Katie mentioned, we had a meeting today with Joint Communications with the school board. We've had some great conversations about how do we uh, really focus on our language and our presentation of the budget in the budget mm -hmm. process, and really uh, <coughs> frame this as more of a process than just a here's a first reading and now let's all run around with our hair on fire. Uh, so we're really trying to make an effort to be very clear on where we are in the process and not necessarily be so limited on dates and readings. That includes beards on fire, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't have a choice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for finance, we did have our uh, have a uh, joint town council and school board um, uh, finance committee uh, meeting last week. And um, we pretty much reviewed the town council's goal that was uh, previously mentioned as part of our overall goal. Um, it was, I thought it was received very well, um, and there was an agreement. There was agreement about how um, that uh, how we're going to uh, present that uh, budget to the public as well. So they're, they're fully um, tied into that and partnered into that. Um, and they also, um, I would say, just from a high level, they also provided some. I think some general expectations about how they're going to be able to contribute to that um, and some of uh, things that are coming down the road. I um, did want to mention that at each of your seats um, is a copy of the, um, the six-month uh, financial statement report, both a balance sheet as well as the expense reports and fund balances. Um, overall, I'm not going to read the uh, document from our uh, finance director, but I think that it's fair to say that the position of the town is that we are in a stable position and that the direction is what I would call either normal or neutral. Um, you know, we expend and receive our funds pretty much on a regular basis at about 50%, which is where you exactly want to be. Um, and we're similar to where we're supposed to be or have been in the past three years. So there's really no deviation from that, um, which I think is uh, telling about the progress that we've made over the years regarding that. Did want to mention also that the documents for the um, the budget this year will be should be uploaded to the portal here pretty soon as they are rolled out, including um, initially it's going to be the calendar um, that's going to be um, provided and a few other supporting documents. So look for that. Did want to mention that the 313 joint meeting of the town council and school board has been canceled, um, basically giving time for just management to really to begin the preparation and their presentation. Didn't feel the need to really uh, go over anything until their regular meeting. On um, April 3rd, uh, of course, the manager will be providing his uh, presentation. I should say the manager and superintendent for the full council. And then on um, April 8th, we will begin our, um, our being the town council's review of the budget with each of the departments. On the very first meeting, um, it's going to be just the school board's presentation. And we're dedicating that one meeting only to that department uh, for that presentation. With that, I did want to cover, uh, kind of as a committee, you know, legislatively, I did want to mention, um, I, I was taking some notes on something else, Councilor Donovan, what was your question regarding, it was a plastic bags? Yeah, the plastic bag ban uh, that yeah. has uh, received some publicity as being in front of the legislature. Yeah, mm -hmm. so just, a, a, I'm a sponsor, the author of one bill only as a freshman, I was lucky to get one in, um, especially out of nearly 2,500, 2,400 bills and I'm a co-sponsor on 25 others. That is not one I'm tracking, but I will mention, and I'm not great on the terminology, but I believe the ENR, which is an, um, Environmental and Natural Resources, did unanimously uh, endorse um, a bill that will ban, um, I believe it's some poly something, um, which I believe is styrofoam um, throughout the entire state. So I'm not sure if that's inclusive of plastic bags as well. I'll have to get more information for you uh, regarding that. And I did want to mention that, um, because it applies to Scarborough in particular, is that there are two bills that I've been, um, or one I've already testified on, the other one I plan on, because uh, it's the bill I'm sponsoring. The first is, uh, which is very important, is LD 774. It's actually a bill um, that would cr um, require um, DEP to come up with uh, standards regarding shore, uh, state standards regarding shoreline and beach erosion. Um, as you know, we are 24 square miles of beachfront and uh, coastal um, coastal line, so it's a very important issue to us, especially both from an ecological but also from an economic perspective it's down on the Pine Point area. And the other one is um, LD334, which is the, um, the renewable capacity resource that actually directly impacts 
um, EcoMain and their structure by adding um, um, basically uh, trash to energy um, into a new classification that allows us to be more competitive and um, sell our uh, energy product on an open market more competitively. Mm -hmm. And there's some other issues regarding that as well. So um, those two directly impact Scarborough and actually help us out in the long term. Thank you. <clears throat> With that, town managers? Yeah. Uh, while my assistant manager is taking all the spotlight, uh, <laughs> I am busy doing things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, this time of year, budget certainly is occupying uh, a lot of my attention. Um, I'm also finalizing all the performance evaluations for senior staff. Uh, I really try to be thorough and thoughtful in that, um, and um, that's just all happening at the same time. There's also a number of ongoing matters that uh, many of which the council uh, is involved with, including um, the Harper Shores contract zone <coughs> matter still is kind of lingering out there. Though the matter is not officially in front of the council, there's certainly still conversations going on. Um, also, the Pine Point Co-op, uh, potential sale of that is an ongoing matter that requires some attention as well. And of course, the public safety building, um, they're making great strides in spite of some challenging weather. Um, and uh, I'm very pleased with, with the progress, but it does require kind of constant oversight. And uh, certainly pleased to put the effort in. Uh, the only thing specifically I'll mention, uh, we did attend our first mediation session this is uh, related to the Piper Shores tax exempt request mm -hmm. on a portion of their existing property. Um, very pleased with the mediator that was jointly selected. I think he's the right person for the job in terms of his background and his style and mannerism. Uh, we didn't make tremendous progress in the first session. Uh, we need to sort out and kind of agree on some basic facts, including basic square footage that we're talking about. I'm confident we'll get there. Uh, we are scheduled for our next session on March 21st. <coughs> and I did have a brief conversation with Jim Adamovich at Piper Shores. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he is properly motivated and prepared to really have some meaningful conversations. So I'm hopeful to be able to report back to council after that point. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> next agenda items, item 11, which is council member comments. And Councilor Bayma, and I'll start. Thank you. In your um, just a few items. First is I um, want to remind everybody that this weekend daylight savings um, occurs, so keep that on your calendar. I um, did want to um, mention that in my role as a state legislator, as well as speaking for uh, Representative Chiazzo, um, we actually receive a report from the state treasurer's office. Um, and so I do have a district-wide, as well as for my own district, but we're really handling this from a you know, one Scarborough kind of perspective from our representations, so not just district by district. Um, and this is a uh, list of all unclaimed property held by the state treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to mention um, that right now for the entire town of Scarborough, there are 580 um, individual claims of unpaid, unclaimed um, property. This is, by the way, unclaimed property is either anything of monetary value that has been uh, returned to the state um, that was left in a checking account that um, either expired, closed, and they couldn't find and get a hold of the previous owner, or it could also include um, other tangible items like stocks or, um, or, or some type of benefit received from either from an insurance claim, insurance company, or mm -hmm. even from an estate or whatever it might be. So um, if you would like, uh, please reach us. Um, on both of our legislative emails that are available. It's just simply our first name, dot, last name, at legislature.main.gov, um, and give us a call. Um, by the way, the 580 um, claims um, total about $100,000. And um, I had a statistic here, but um, about 469 or 81, 82% of all of those claims are under $100. But there are 12 people who have claims that are over $1,000. They don't tell us the exact amount. But there's over a thousand dollars in each one of those claims. So, mm -hmm. um, who knows? Um, instead of winning the lottery, you might have some money out there. You gonna look me up? Or? Um, I already looked up everybody okay. here. Um, I, I will mention that there is one counselor who has family on here. That is a former counselor. So um, take a hint. Um, I did try calling. I do. I have been calling, but um, um, there are people on here. I'd be happy to share that list with people as well. Um, so, if you'd like that, um, I did want to mention. Outside of that. Um, it's always hard talking about people who passed. Um, but first, I, I think that um, as a town, we are very appreciative of our public servants, um, public safety uh, personnel. We're all aware of what happened to the young man that um, was a firefighter in the town of Berwick. 
who also was from uh, Old Orchard Beach and worked in Old Orchard Beach. So I hope that uh, we recognize the loss that those two communities have and be appreciative of uh, the men and women who serve our community um, during this time. Uh, I heard, I, I don't know 100%, but I believe that actually the services are going to be at the Cross Insurance Center in Portland because of the response that public it's going to be. So it's pretty, uh, pretty telling. And last, um, I, as some of you passed, but I have to smile because he's such an incredible guy. Been in town forever. Bruce McLuhan mm -hmm. uh, went by the nickname Gumby. He used to actually own Dunstan Garden mm -hmm. or Dunstan Greenhouse, which was... Uh, um, the greenhouse that later became Esterbrook's, he rented to Esterbrook Farms that uh, was on Route 1 right before <coughs> Southgate, um, the Southgate building. Um, he passed away. Um, his contribution, he was a Vietnam veteran. He was a member of the American Legion and past commander many, many times. But his big piece that he was always the quiet guy that was at our Memorial Day parades that was helping people line up, um, that was always at the end of the parade making sure people got in and would let um, some people get in really late at the very last minute. Um, he was just a contributor, and, and he did that for many years. I want to say a good 20 years. Um, so uh, Godspeed and, and God rest to, uh, to Gumby, who's an incredible guy. With that, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Johnson. I'll, I'm going to use my time to uh, finish my liaison reports because I forgot them. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce... <laughs> Uh, unanimously voted to support the Acker proposal uh, this past month's um, meeting, and they have not voted on the Piper Shores proposal yet. Uh, however, they seem very favorable to it. They're waiting to vote on it as a body until more information comes to light for them. Um, and for the Board of Education, the 17 person uh, search committee that is made up of, I believe, five community members, some administrators, some teachers. Uh, has been formed, and the first day of interviews for a new superintendent for, from that committee uh, is March 30th. Very good. I'll follow uh, Councillor Hamill's uh, lead because I neglected Johnson. to Johnson. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, it's a Hamill, common mistake. Johnson, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of like. <laughs> uh, you knew what I meant. Oh, I knew. <laughs> Um, so I, I was remiss in not mentioning the Conservation Commission, but they had to cancel their meeting this week for lack of uh, ability of attendance. Um, but they are very excited about the plastic ban that has been talked about at the state level. So um, they, it's something that they have wanted at the local level. I fully expect that they're going to um, kind of keep their eyes on what's happening there and then hope that we will follow suit. So it is an interesting development mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. that regard. Uh, and then on a side note, in all my spare time, um, there is a project that's unrelated to any of my uh, official council duties, but it's something I'm pretty passionate about, and it is starting to take shape and have some legs, and that, as I've mentioned it a few times, is a, a project whereby we could create banners to represent um, individual Scarborough veterans, and then have those either on display somewhere in or around Memorial Park or Memorial day or maybe involved in the parade in some way, shape, or form. Um, and this was all started by a young man at the Veterans uh, Center who just really has a lot of passion for it, and he's helped pull the right people together, and um, there's a lot of energy to do something. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that, and I'm hoping within the next 30 days I'll actually have something substantive to put in front of you guys and get your reactions to, because I think it would be a very cool thing for the town. That's it. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to start by congratulating the Scarborough High School Academic Decathlon team. <coughs> they did win the states mm -hmm. this year. Um, <clears throat> and they are currently raising $5,000 to go to, I believe it's Minneapolis, is where the nationals will be. <coughs> uh, my daughter was on the Academic Decathlon team for three years at Scarborough High School, and it was such a fabulous opportunity for her and for um, other kids who are on it. Uh, I know a lot of people think, oh, it's just the smarty pants kids in school, but they actually have A, B, and C divisions, and that means what grade level, what grade average you get. Um, so kids with C averages can be on academic decathlon, and I know personally a couple of young men who are on academic decathlon with my daughter who it was really a springboard for them to move forward and like go to college where they didn't think they were going to go and it's just a fabulous program and opportunity. So I did want to congratulate them. 
Um, and also, I would like to put something forward to you guys <laughs> here. I've been asked by the Maine Municipal um, to come up and testify on March 20th, which is the date of our next council meeting. Um, they are getting some towns and cities together, and I would like to be able to go. I plan to go and speak anyway, but I'd like to be able to go and say I'm speaking for the council as a whole, rather than just me as myself as a councilor. Um, and basically, I hate to say in opposition to, but in opposition to Governor Mills' budget as it relates to municipal revenue sharing. Uh, I know in the times that I've been on the council, the first couple, I'm looking at uh, our former chair over here, um, that we had some real hits once revenue sharing was taken away. And the very first year I was on, I actually did an ad that was on TV. Um, regarding, oh, you know, shouldn't take away municipal revenue sharing because the governor at the time wanted to just take it all away. Um, it is down to 2%. The governor's proposal is 2.5, maybe go up slowly to 3. I know there are four or five bills in the hopper right now with the legislature to move it up. Um, and there's all sorts of different variations on that. Uh, the uh, Senate President, Troy Jackson, is, he wants to see it higher. I believe Sarah Gideon does too, but I haven't had a chance to talk to her. But the bottom line is I would like to be able to go up there and say that the Scarborough Town Council would encourage the legislature to, move, er, to, to help us move revenue sharing closer to the 5% that it's legally at and hasn't been at, because it will help our taxpayers particularly since we're minimum receivers with the school. So uh, I'm not sure what the process would be here. I'm looking at, yeah. I'm looking at our parliamentarian who's over there typing away, or our town manager. Yeah, I think the problem is that testimony's on March 20th. 20th, yeah. Which is... Uh, yeah, we don't have a meeting, meeting yeah. So. Uh. Can I add some perspective? So in the past, counselors have gone up and provided individual testimony, um, and I don't personally have a problem. I think you can use good judgment in whether you're speaking on behalf of yourself. Um, as long as, the, my only caveat is being a legislator, as long as the council doesn't believe that by you speaking on behalf of all right. of us, then I then am required to vote um, in conjunction with that because there's other realities I, I kind of have to... Yeah. So, um, but I mean, I don't know if you remember, I think that we had one counselor that went up and spoke uh, on educational issues and there was... That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So, personally, I'm okay if you do. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, comments for Jean Marie and her request and what she's... I don't know enough about the background associated with uh, the budget restraints that exist or where it goes from 2.5 to... To what, to what, so uh, I'd be happy to, I don't know whether we want to talk about it on the 14th. You could, or... Oh, that's true. We would never no, do it the 14th. Perhaps you could give a conceptual indication to Jean Marie that, that she could, but um, perhaps you could circulate your written testimony for people to see yeah. so they can actually see what the written word is. I presume yeah. you'll have some prepared text. Oh, absolutely. And some more background information that would give us context. Yeah. That'd be great. And then... As we as we talk about the 14th, trying to get together with some yeah. other issues, yeah, we could we could I can get, get some draft together. I want to pull yeah, down. That, that, that's so a great suggestion. A <coughs> well, yeah, I was just I, I remember this issue coming up. I can't mm. remember if it was last year or the year before, and I can't remember exactly how we ended up <coughs> solving it. Um, but I want us to just be mindful and be consistent. Right. I guess would be my you know. Uh, I know in the past I've had a council vote that said yeah go ahead go. Yeah, and I go. think I think that's what we did last. We built a consensus around. Yeah, it just didn't feel right to rush it on the agenda. Uh, right. You're right, there is an opportunity in the 14th, so yeah. to the extent it yep. can be clarified and beyond that. Uh, That'd that be great. Be and I'll get a great. draft out to you guys. That'll make me get it done. <laughs> great. <laughs> any other comments? It's short and sweet. Tonight? Council Kennedy, any other comments? Or you no, I'm good. good. You're good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council uh, The few years we've had the Senior Property Tax Relief Program as amended in place. I've tried to do an audit uh, uh, each year just to, to be able to report to everybody uh, how are we doing 
Uh, and that usually involves meeting with uh, Susan Russo, the deputy assessor, uh, who I did meet with uh, this year. Uh, uh, they have a new assistant there, Emily Bain, uh, who uh, Assistant Tommy Andrew Crockett reports to me is a great addition to that uh, department, smart, Cracker Jack. So uh, that's strengthening our uh, assessing department. Uh, uh, and here are the, here's kind of the high level report. Uh, uh, we were up significantly in terms of the number of people who were uh, helped. Uh, from 312 in 2017 to 351 in 2018. That's the most significant increase mm -hmm. we've had. And if you remember where we were about five years ago, <coughs> we were at 100. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what uh, the destruction of this program, because of budget restraints and the restrictions that were being imposed uh, uh, by state government. Uh, uh, I try to look at the income levels and the age levels uh, never looking at individuals' data, but 90% um, uh, of the people who we're assisting are over the age of 70. Uh, you can qualify at 62, 10 years resident, 62 years old, but the overwhelming, over 90%, uh, were over the age of 70. Uh, the uh, uh, over 90% of those receiving aid had income under $40,000, uh, 80% had income under $30,000. Uh, and the value of the homes that they resided in, 85% of them were below the average value of homes mm -hmm. in Scarborough. Uh, we uh, have, as required by state law, uh, included renters, and last year, through the action of the town council, we made sure that mobile home owners would be able to qualify. Therefore, that number has gone up to 17. Uh, uh, and their income average was, and since it's a smaller number, it wasn't that hard to, uh, between 15 and $20,000 was the income average for those 17 recipients. So uh, the conclusion is that we're serving the right residents. Uh, we're meeting <coughs> the needs of a, a portion of the community that, that would benefit greatly. Uh, and not force them out of their houses. Uh, for every $100 that we increase at 350 participants, that's a $35,000 increase in the budget. I think this is a year in which uh, we will have a challenge with our budget. So I'm not going to make any recommendation at this time, but uh, uh, I know others on this council are sympathetic to, uh, uh, to this. Um, there is a memo from the assessing department summarizing the 2018 <clears throat> outcome and that be available to the town manager's uh, office. Uh, <coughs> the, uh, uh, I missed uh, uh, making at least a brief comment on rules and policies, Katie reminded me. Uh, uh, I've been meeting with the assistant town manager to work on the TIF and credit enhancement agreement policy. Uh, and the uh, assistant town manager has been doing a good job of trying to uh, do an analysis of other, uh, we're looking for model uh, 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 best practice uh, uh, provisions. And, and we've also had the benefit of Sean <coughs> Mueller, the town attorney, doing some research for us. And so we've actually gone through literally dozens of uh, policies <coughs> to try and uh, uh, find the right one. Uh, the unclaimed property uh, was interesting to me because uh, I handled a case for uh, uh, people who had unclaimed property some years, many years ago now, uh, and uh, oftentimes you can uh, research on the state's website, this was Massachusetts uh, uh, and Florida where I was doing my work, but I could actually <coughs> plug in the name of the uh, deceased. And it's not uncommon for people to have lost a small insurance policy, uh, to uh, have electric bills on which there was some refund, or a bond. Uh, that, uh, and, uh, and these people just, they came upon some papers years after the fact. And we had to go through a, uh, 
open a, a, a state uh, approval in uh, Florida uh, District Court, uh, but we did it and uh, found a lawyer to do it inexpensively and, uh, and got about $10,000. So it's worth looking at. Thank you. Can I ask Bill one question? Has there, Bill, has there been any increase in this benefit over the lifetime of this program, or has it been yes. six? It has. Uh, okay. uh, la last, last year, uh, Katie supported uh, the benefit, and uh, uh, a number of other people were were pushing for okay. it. And so yep. we did. We increased it from five hundred to six hundred last year. Okay. And by the way, it is the most responsive senior property tax relief program in the state. Yes, <clears throat> and I've gone to a number of seminars and given uh, talks on this uh, to MMA, uh, 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 GP COG, and uh, it is by far, and so the town of Scarborough can be proud that mm -hmm. it is taking a leadership position and supporting people to let them stay in their houses in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. And that's mm -hmm. really where this group is. Thank you. Very old group. Russell <laughs> uh, On a brief and uh, somewhat whimsical note, I did want to point out to folks who may have missed it this week that one of the bills pending in Augusta is a proposal for a new state flag that would resurrect the 1901 flag that is on a buff background with a green pine tree and a, a blue north star. So this was uh, put forward. I'm disappointed it didn't come from... Uh, from uh, Sean or uh, or Chris, but uh, <laughs> Representative Janice Cooper uh, Yarmouth put this forward, and uh, I did like the one quote. There was a quote from uh, Patrick Woodcock out of the Governor's <laughs> Energy Office, who felt that uh, when he first saw the design on the proposed replacement flag, uh, he said it was like finding a gem in the attic from an old Maine relative. <laughs> so. Uh, Anyway, they're going to try to give it a trial uh, run on Maine's bicentennial year in 2020. So, excellent. Big news. Big news. Okay. Big news. Yeah. And on that note, uh, Council Bayman. I just want to, because um, I should have mentioned the website for the unclaimed property. It's maineunclaimedproperty.gov. Yes. Anybody can go in, you type in your name, select your community. Anybody can do that. Um, and, um, you also, it's a little sensitive around business names. You kind of have to be specific. And for businesses who bought businesses, you may have a right to claim that property as well. So keep that in mind because you can look that up as well. So I guess with that, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. I won. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I've been so busy talking about.